What's going on guys? Stixie with the Token Minorities bringing you another deck on Pokemon TCGO and today I am bringing you a deck centered around Golisopod from Guardians Rising. It was a very cool deck list and deck idea that Orobom gave me and so I just decided to kind of run with it especially when it was paired up with the promo Lurantis and before I get into the deck just a reminder that if you guys liked this video or found it helpful please leave a like, drop a comment, and click that subscribe button helps us out a ton and lets us do more cool stuff for you guys and as for the question of the day uh this has nothing to do with the deck but over the past couple days i have been watching uh the madison wisconsin regionals just all the matches that have been posted that uh pokemon streamed and all that and one deck that i saw a lot in one deck that i have really uh that i really really like and am excited to try out is the metagross gx deck and yes i already did that uh, I did a Metagross and uh, Genesect deck, but that's not, I mean, the deck list that people were running were uh, quite a bit different than mine. It was just focused on four Metagross, and yeah, I'm like, super excited to try that out, but I will admit, when Guardians Rising came out, Orobon was super excited about it, and I was not. I thought Metagross was going to be mediocre. Um, I mean, I thought it was going to be a decent mediocre, but I still thought it was going to be mediocre, but seeing its success in uh regionals and at the highest level of play really made me realize that i was very wrong and i misjudged metagross quite a bit and that comes to my question of the day were there any cards from guardians rising that you guys misjudged i mean like i said i misjudged metagross i thought you know what it's a stage two uh the format is a little bit too fast for that uh even though it has 250 hp it's really not going to be brought out all that much its ability is decent i mean you can search for a I mean, you can attach to your active, but it kind of limits what you can attach to. And Giga Hammer only hits for 150, 180 with a choice band. So really, I just thought that it wasn't overall that good. Like, I thought that it was just kind of a bulky card that could be decent in like a rogue deck or something like that. But to see it uh, have this level, but to see it achieve the level of play that it did is really, really cool. And that's because 250 HP is obviously gigantic and is very difficult to knock out uh well what is it geotech system allows you to like max potion continually attach all that giga hammer while it only hits for 150 and you can't use it next turn it hits for enough there are ways around just like retreating and then uh geotech systeming and then the format also has slowed down immensely because of garbador so having uh Having a stage two is not the death sentence that it was before. So basically, I was just wrong about Metagross, and it, it really excites me to see how much success it is having. So yeah, let me know if there were any cards from Guardians Rising that you guys misjudged complete me, completely in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, just let me know. I'm uh, very curious to see what, what cards you guys overlooked or just thought would be uh, a lot worse than they actually are. But anyway, on to the deck. Another card I misjudged was Golisopod, uh, 130 HP. So I mean, it's I mean it's just kind of the magic number right now for uh, non EXs is 130 HP. With the armor ability, this Pokemon takes 30 less damage from attacks. That's actually huge. So Golisopod, in essence, has 160 HP, which for a stage one non EX is amazing. Its attack, Resolute Claws, does 80 plus 70 if your opponent's active Pokemon is an EX or GX, which 150 against EXs and GX is easily powered up with Choice Band. I was like, you know what? This card, I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. However, once the Lorantis promo came out with Sunny Day, the attacks of your Grass and Fire Pokemon do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. All of a sudden, this guy could hit for uh, 200 damage with a Choice Band and a single Lorantis in play. For a Stage 1 non-EX, that is absolutely absurd. And armor just increases the ability of this Pokemon to survive longer, take more hits, get bigger knockouts, all that stuff. So Golisopod is actually really awesome, and I wanted to try out this deck. Just basically kind of an EX killer deck. Um, so yeah, basically the whole strategy, I mean, this is going to be relatively quick because of how simple the strategy is. It's attack with Golisopod, use Lorantis for support and have shamans and leleis for draw support uh, as for the lines of pokemon running one two of shaman and lele the format is going a lot more towards just ditching shaman completely and i mean i completely understand that and i agree with it in a lot of cases however i still like the ability to just draw a couple extra cards in a turn especially in a deck 
where you have the potential to attack turn one with Lorantis GX, where you have the ability to evolve immediately with Forest of Giant Plants. I like the ability of Shaman to just extend just a little bit farther. So that's why I like running one Shaman, but also two Lele, because I mean, Lele is the future. Lele is the card that's going to be... Lele is, Lele is going to be the uh, format-defining card, along with Garbodor, in my opinion. So uh, yeah, that's why we're running more of those, but still Shaman, like I said, just to extend a little bit more in each turn. Uh, like I said, we are running this Lorantis, which powers up Golisopod, and I'm actually running a pretty relatively funky line of stuff. So I'm running four Fomantis, I mean, obviously, max number of that because we have four Lorantis, but I'm running three of the promo Lorantis to power up our grass attackers, but also one Lorantis GX for the flower supply. Uh, it helps you attach... Attach energy from the discard pile helps you power up Golisopod, because Golisopod cannot be powered up in one turn. You need a Grass and a DCE in order for it to be able to attack. So Lorantis allows you to be like, you know what, there's some energy in the discard pile. Um, I have an attachment for the turn. I'm going to attach it to Lorantis, and then essentially turn my one attachment into uh, three attachments for the turn. Power up a couple Wimpod or Golisopod on the bench. Really, Lorantis just helps this deck in a lot of situations, just helps it speed up, and also gives it an even... Actually, you know what? This deck already has a good matchup against Lapras, so that's beside the point. Uh, actually, well, if I guess that they just discard all our energy. So Lorantis just helps out quite a bit, helps get energy on the field faster, helps damage a little bit in case Glyspot isn't able to take one-hit knockouts, etc., etc., and then the synergy of Lorantis and Lorantis is very incredible as well. And then we are also running 3-3 of Wimpod and Golisopod. Now you might be thinking, wait, why are you only running 3-3 if they're your main attacker? Well, first of all, that'd be running 19 Pokemon, which is just a little bit too much for me in this deck. And then also, we're going to be attacking with Lorantis GX a little bit in the deck. So essentially, we have four attackers, and Golispot is just going to come in, take gigantic knockouts. It has very good longevity built in with armor. So that thing is going to be able to two, uh, to get two attacks off more often than not. So that's why 3-3 three, three is actually okay in this deck. And then the two Lele, like I said, because 2-1 of Lele and Shaman is what I like, particularly on TCGO. Uh, as for the items, running one Escape Rope, just because, I mean, Lorantis has a nasty two retreat cost. Spot has a nasty two. So if they, like, get brought up and you don't want to attach a DCE, Escape Rope and... Uh, Floatstone are ways of getting around that. And also people, well, like I said, Lele is uh, one of the format defining cards. So people play that on their bench a lot. Escape Rope is a way to coax that thing in and be able to get a knockout with Golisopod on it. So Escape Rope works as like a uh, pseudo Lysander, but also a switch card as well. One Field Blower because Garbotoxin really shuts down a lot of this deck. I mean, ability, 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 all those have abilities that they actually actively rely on. So Garbotoxin really, really hinders this deck. So that's why we're running Field Blower. Uh, running 2-4 of Level Ball and Ultra Ball. I mean, this deck, I mean, it has GXs in it, but it doesn't mind running a little bit higher count of items just because... Uh, I mean, it'd be essentially trading prize, essentially trading single prize attackers with Garbodor. Yeah, Garbodor has a little bit better of a matchup, but you can work around that, just play a little bit more conservatively. But in other matchups, being able to level ball for Wimpod and Fomantis is very nice, but then Ultra Ball just gets you, gets you the Pokemon when you want it. One Revitalizer is a way of kind of recurring our Grass Pokemon back into our hand. Super Rod is just another method of recursion, specifically for energy. If your Lorantis is prized, or your Lorantis GX is prized or already knocked out, just stuff like that. Super out is a way of getting the, that stuff back. Uh, for VS Seeker, let us reuse all of our supporters. And as for the supporters, I mean, you have my standard 332 line of Sycamore N and Lysander. I've been kind of leaning more towards trying out 442, just as, I mean, just more draw supporters, less items, stuff like that. But for the time being, I still like 332 as my kind of go to. One Kikui increase the damage because Golisopod with a uh, choice band. I mean, essentially, 
Um, with a Lurantis in play, you don't necessarily need a Choice Band. Kikui just increases the damage just a little bit more to hit a magic number that you might need to hit. So, I mean, just Kikui, Choice Band, and Lurantis increase the damage uh, output from Golisopod to levels where it can just take one shots on EXs and GXs, which is what this deck relies on. And then one Olympia, again, another way of switching our Pokemon out. Also healing up Golisopod in the process, but really it's just kind of a supporter way of being able to switch out Pokemon that we don't want in the active spot. As for the tools, running 3-2 of Choice Band and Floatstone. Floatstones are for the Lurantises with two retreat cost. Choice Band is to boost the damage output of both Lurantis GX and Golisopod. For Forest of Giant Plants, just kind of a given. I mean, that's what this deck runs on that runs Grass Pokemon. So Forest of Giant Plants is there so you can just evolve immediately. For DCE, because, I mean... Golisopod relies on DCE, so that's why that's there, and then we can also attack with Lele. And then six Grass Energy for, again, our attackers, Lurantis and Golisopod, and then to a lesser extent Lele, but you really want to be attacking with Golisopod or Lurantis 99% of the time. So, yeah, pretty simple, straightforward deck idea. Um, not much else to say, so let's go ahead and see it in action. Alrighty, we have found one against Red Fox with a... Fighting Psychic and Normal Deck, and actually, sorry, it's Red Fox. Not just Red Fox, it's Red Fox because of all the extra X's on there. But if this is a Passimian Mew deck, we're kind of going to be in a world of hurt because I think... I mean, yeah, Golispot is phenomenal at knocking out EX's and GX's, but otherwise it just kind of doesn't have the damage output to keep up with it. So we are going to be able to go first, luckily. I mean, my opponent will probably still be able to attack regardless, so there's that. But, okay, um... Hmm. Do I want to start with Wimpod? Yeah, let's go ahead and start with Wimpod. I can play the Fomantis down. And it looks like I'm going to be relying on Kikui in order to be able to draw cards. So, I mean, that's something. Uh, <laughs> I mean, as long as my opponent isn't able to knock me out turn one. And it's a Carbink Zygarde deck. Well, there's that. Uh, as long as my opponent isn't able to switch out, I should be okay. So, let's go ahead and play an Energy onto Golisopod. Or, Wimpod, sorry. And slap the choice band on there just because. Maybe waste my opponent to force my opponent to waste an early field blower if he wants to get rid of that. And as long as my opponent doesn't have like an energy, a, a strong energy, a stadium, and a switch, then my Wimpod will be able to survive this turn. Well, also the Fighting Fury Bell, we just saw that. So, okay, the energy goes on to the carving, so my Wimpod will be able, able to survive. If I can top deck a Golisopod, I'm going to be able to. Lysander up the Zygarde and one-shot that thing. Okay, I get nothing, so I'm going to have to Kikui again. So, Kikui, can you give me something good? Fingers crossed. That works. That actually works really, really well. Because what I can do is DCE up my Wimpod, Ultra Ball, get rid of the Lysander and the... Super Rod, just because I want to have the Force to counter whatever he goes for. That way I can grab a Goliath Spot. I have a Lele for next turn to be able to draw some cards. And there we go. Okay, so... Alright, let's Resolute Claw knock out this uh, Carbink. And I'll be able to one-shot the Zygarde as well next turn uh, to top that all off. Even if my opponent Lysander's up my Fomantis, I'll be able to retreat that thing out. I mean, I just... Yeah, this is a phenomenal position. Luckily, my opponent wasn't able to get any damage off. It's going to be able to Lance Pulse me, but it's not going to do any damage like at all. Unless my opponent gets a Stadium up, because then he'll be able to... Uh... If he gets a Stadium, he'll be able to hit me for a whopping 10 damage because of armor on Golisopod. So luckily that's going to come into play. And yeah, Lance Pulse does absolutely nothing. I'm going to be able to win the game right here by just DCing up my Golisopod and winning. But otherwise, my opponent just decides to forfeit. So there's that. We win the game off of Golispod just <laughs> destroying a ground deck that was weak to grass. So, I mean, yeah, grass is actually a phenomenal typing in this current meta because of weaknesses that it can hit for. Golispod was able to take advantage of that right there and just run through a Carbink Zygarde deck that wasn't able to get much going anyway. I mean, we would have won regardless because of type. But yeah, that was first match. Very short. Let's go ahead and try to find another one with this deck. Alrighty, we have found another one against a P15V1, I don't even know, P15V161. So I'm wondering if somebody just decided to head desk the keyboard, or palm the keyboard, or whatever, or if that actually has some meaning behind it. Luckily, we do get to go first, and once again, we don't have a draw supporter. 
so there's that. Um, I mean, I run enough in this deck, and I run Lele's, and I run Shamans, and I run Ultra Balls, so I mean, you'd think I'd be able to get something, right? Um, and there's a Tauros. So, what I'm going to do is go ahead and level ball for another Wimpod or a Fomantis. Let's grab the Fomantis. And honestly, I'm just going to have to do that. Ener probably energy up the Wimpod. I mean, I'm going to Olympia out of danger just because a Fighting Fury Belt is all my opponent needs on Tauros to be able to knock out my Wimpod. So, yeah, I'm just going to energy to knock out, yeah, the Wimpod with the DC. So, I'm just going to energy up the Wimpod and call it a turn. Uh... Uh, Altar of the Moon does come down, and let's see, my opponent is nest balling. What's, what is he going to grab? He grabs a Trubbish. Okay, so this is a Garbodor deck. On the bright side, I mean, I'll be using all of, like, two items <laughs> so far this game. Um, on the, well, actually, this is, this is great. Because what I can do is, of course, that's a VS Seeker. It's exactly what I wanted. How did you know, game? How did you know a VS Seeker was just what I wanted? On the bright side, Resolute Claws is going to be able to Oko this Tauros. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. And again, no supporter. I mean, I swear I play them in this deck, guys. I promise you that I play supporters somewhere. And if my opponent doesn't get a Garbodor, I actually win. I mean, even Garbodor at this point, like, if I just don't play any items for the rest of the game, like, Garbodor is not going to be able to hit me for any damage at all. Uh, and my opponent does end, so I mean, I'll take that. That's fine, and now I'm at the point, it's like, well, do I even bother playing down anything? Uh, there's a level ball, so I might just go ahead and grab a Fomantis. Uh, actually, he'll be able to not hit me for 20, and unfortunately, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to allow him to hit me for 10 damage. I mean, that's that's how it's going to go. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Altar of the Moon, counter it with my Force, and what I can do right here is escape rope to be able to knock out the trubbish and take another prize um or hmm if i escape rope into the trubbish that's 10 damage i mean that's fine and then you know what i'm gonna let garbador hit me for 30 just so i can get just so i can get a lorantis set up in the background i mean that way if if something happens i mean yeah he'll be able to hit me for 30 damage now that's fine with me. And I'm going to hold on to the grass energy just in case. Because, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. And I top deck a... Well, not top deck. I get a Shaman off the prizes. So there we go. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, he's going to be able to hit me for a whopping 30 damage. But, I mean, guys, if, if, we, if we work hard. If we work hard and stick together, I think we'll be able to overcome the 30 damage that Garbodor is going to be able to do to my Golisopod. Um, the only thing... Like, I mean, I realistically could have just not played a single item for the rest of the game because I already have a Golisopod set up. Armor would keep me from being able to be chipped away, and then I could just one-shot things and start going crazy. But for whatever reason, I'm just scared of my opponent potentially getting a Fighting Fury Belted Drampa and then being able to one-shot my Golisopod, and then I lose because he benches me out. So I think I'm playing it the right way. Um, yeah, there's the Drampa right there. So... Glad I decided to play down a Lorantis. Yes, I know. Garbodor is going to be able to hit me for 30 damage, but we'll, we'll make it through it. Uh, and we see the rainbow energy come down onto the Lele. I'm honestly okay with that. Just, I mean, well, actually, it powers up Berserk a little more. Uh, special charges to get one DCE back, and then there's the Magma Seeker base. Okay, so we will Trash Lanch. Hit me for a massive 30 damage. If I can get a Lysander, I will have a chance to uh, just knock out the, probably the Lele, just because that's the only thing that's potentially getting power. Actually, no, I'll take out the Drampa because the Lele isn't as much of a threat. And, hmm. Well, once again, not a single draw supporter. But, again, I'm not in a horrible spot. So, it's actually really kind of funny. I am up against a Garbodor deck. The, un unquestionably the top deck in the meta right now. I have not drawn a single draw supporter in the entire game, and I'm still very, very, very far ahead. I just find that actually really, really funny. Um, <laughs> it's actually kind of awesome. It, now, if I had told you that situation, you, uh, you probably wouldn't have believed me. You would have been like, wait, how are you winning when you haven't drawn a single draw supporter all game long? Like, that makes no sense. And that VS Seeker... 
I mean, I know I was saying, oh, VS Seeker, exactly what I wanted. Well, in this situation, that's actually kind of exactly what I wanted. Because what I can do is... Well, let's see, I could... Eh, no, N wouldn't do anything. What I can do is go ahead and actually grab the Olympia. Heal up my Golisopod a little bit, which actually could be pretty significant moving forward because of if Lele gets another energy on it, it's only going to be doing 80 instead of 100, which would not be able to knock me out. And then I'm going to uh, Floatstone up the Lurantis and then Flower Supply, knock out the Garbodor. I mean, yeah, it doesn't accelerate any energy, but it not only heals my Golisopod, but gets it out of harm's way. That way my opponent has to have a Lysander or something like that. And then the next turn, I could have just retreated my Lurantis out back into my Golisopod and knocked out whatever GX my opponent decided to promote. So that's actually hysterical. Going up against the top deck in the meta, we don't draw a single draw supporter. Well, we actually ended up drawing one or having the ability to use one with VS Seeker for N. But we didn't draw a single draw supporter in the entire game. And we were still able to end up winning incredibly convincingly. I think that is hysterical and awesome at the same time. But yeah, I mean, that was a match. But you know what? I think we got time for one or two more, depending on how good they are. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to find another one. Another one that I hopefully get a draw supporter in with this deck. Alrighty, we have found another one against uh, Shugo93 with a Psychic lightning and normal deck and normally if i saw that in the old standard i'd be like oh my gosh this is night march i quit everything i quit this game i quit life i just i hate everything if it's night march but in this standard it's probably uh coco or yeah some version of tapu coco because i think that's the best lightning deck in the format right now i could be wrong but that's okay i'll be honest i'm just trying to give a cop out in that situation I, i'm pretty positive that coco is the best deck in the format i just wanted to say that in case i um needed to be like oh well actually this deck is and uh, that way i could save myself but you know what i'm just saying it coco is the best lightning deck in the format i think um but either way we start off with some decent stuff uh we actually have a draw supporter so i mean that's something new always nice to see uh let's ultra ball get rid of the glycopod and a grass energy i mean i have ways of recurring those let's grab another fomantis just I mean, there's no Fomantis like too many Fomantis. And also, the more I get up, the, the harder I'm going to be able to hit with the Golisopod. Let's Fighting Fury Belt up the active Fomantis. And then, hmm. Let's play another Wimpod. And do I want to play another Fomantis? I could. But I don't think I will. I mean, it, I might end up playing it next turn. Who knows? And then it's, I'm going to draw into a bunch of Lurantises and no... Uh, Force of Giant Plants, and I'll just be like, man, I wish I'd played that Fomantis a turn earlier. But uh, either way, I'm in a pretty good spot. I can always Lele for a Sycamore to be able to draw into, hopefully, a DCE, which will allow me to one-shot the Shaman. And what's kind of cool, my Golisopod will not be able to get knocked out by any attack from Tapu Koko. Well, I mean, Tapu Thunder potentially would... Okay, if he has a Tapu Thunder... With a Fighting Fury Belt, and I have a fully powered up Golisopod, then yes, he can one-shot me. But otherwise, I mean, then that's wasting your GX attack to knock out a 130 HP one prize attacker, which I will consider a win in any in any world. Um, my opponent is just going to go ahead and grab a Tapu Lele, grab a Lily. That's, I mean, as long as he doesn't get like, well, there's an attachment. As long as he doesn't get double max elixir. What? Why would you... Huh. I'm confused by that play. I don't know why you would go ahead and play the Coco down. I would think that you'd want to save it for next turn or something like that. And I get a Shaman. Hmm. So let's go ahead and play the Golisopod down. Play the Lele for a Sycamore almost assuredly, yeah. Oh, do I want to get rid of the Shaman? I don't know. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the Sycamore. I can Shaman for two, which I think I'm just going to go ahead and do. Maybe get a, a DCE or a Choice Band. Just one of the things that I'm missing. There's the DCE. And I'll actually be able to get a couple more cards in the discard pile for uh, Lurantis GX to be able to take care of. And unfortunately, I do not get a... I don't get a 
forest giant plants or a choice band. However, I do get a field blower, which is essentially in this situation just as good as a forest because it gets rid of the uh, Finding Fury Bell and the Stadium. And unfortunately, I don't get a Lorantis. I will not be able to one-shot this Coco. That is tragic. That is incredibly tragic. Hitting it for only 150. Oh, man, I wish I had another Lorantis. I wish I had that promo Lorantis be able to just 20 more damage. Then his energy is off the board. I took two prizes. Oh, that was... That was a tough one. That was a tough one to swallow. Ah, darn it. But at this point, my opponent can get a... Well, if he hits a Max Elixir and a Coco, he'll be able to drop that thing. And hopefully he doesn't have a Fighting Fury Belt. Uh, as well as a Max Elixir and a Coco, because then that'd make me sad, because he'd knock out my Glycopod, which was set to do a bunch of work. <laughs> However, at this point, I actually might almost have game on board. We see the Max Elixir come down. Does he hit it? He does. He's throwing it onto the Lele. I mean, I don't think it'll end up mattering, because in all likelihood, yeah, there's the Coco. I knew the Coco was going to be coming down. Uh, he will be able to Sky High Claws me. No matter what attack he goes for, like I said, unless he gets a Fighting Fury Belt, will not be able to knock me out. So I'm in a very good position regardless. And what I can do is simply... Um, wait, I need... Ah, I need to get rid of that stadium. So I can't just Kakui for the knockout. Let's act Actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and escape rope. Ta I mean, I'll take the knockout with Kakui on something. I mean, why not? It's... It's an... <laughs> And if my opponent... Okay, my opponent goes Lele, so I am just going to go into my Fomantis. And I could Kikui for the knockout, like I was saying, but I think... I just want to force Giant Plants. I want a Lorantis. I want... I want a lot of stuff at this point. So what I'm going to do, DC up the Wimpod, get that force of Giant Plants out there, Ultra Ball, get rid of the Floatstone and the Fomantis, so I can grab a Promo Lorantis... I mean, this way I'll at least be able to one-shot the Lele, have a potential Glycopod for next turn. And yeah, so let's go ahead and retreat into Glycopod, knock out the Tapu Lele with Resolute Claws, and take two prizes. If my opponent wants to knock out my Glycopod, that is fine with me. Uh, there's another Lorantis. You are too late, buddy. I don't love you anymore. But ooh, another play I could make is Lysandering up the damaged Coco, hitting it with flower supply, and then, yeah, and then threatening the knockout with uh, Chlorosythe. Okay, so the, I mean, as long as my opponent doesn't have a max potion, because if he has a max potion, then that completely destroys my, my plan. But otherwise, I think I'm still okay. Uh, yeah, Sky High Claws will be able to go ahead, knock out my Golisopod, that's fine. Um, Lorantis actually would be able to come in and not get knocked out by Tapu Thunder because I only have one energy. Uh, because I only have three energy in play, sorry. Um, but I do talk to the deck the Lysander, which allows me to make that play. I don't, I'm not sure if I had one, but either way, I mean, I can just Lysander that thing in. Flower Supply, knock out the Coco while doing two things. So I'm going to obviously get two energy, put one on the Wimpod to threaten the Golisopod next turn. And then I'm going to put another on to my Lorantis to threaten a Chlorosythe knockout if I can get a Forest of Giant Plants. Because actually what that'll do, if I get a Forest, I'll be able to counter his Stadium, and then with the extra 20 damage from the Fomant uh, from the Lorantis on the bench, Chlorosythe with another Grass Energy will be doing 170, which is enough to knock out the Coco. So basically at this point I'm threatening game. If my opponent doesn't disrupt my hand, I have a for sure Golisopod. If my opponent uh, attacks in, into and knocks out the Wimpod, then I have a Lorantis. All I need is a single Grass Energy to win the game. And there we go. Yep, I did allow my opponent to knock me out with Tapu Thunder. Just because, I mean, I wanted to threaten him with that. But at this point, I have the game. Do I? No, I need to counter his Stadium. Let's go ahead and Ultra Ball. Get rid of the Lorantis and the Sycamore. Grab a Golisopod. And all I need is a Forest or a Choice Band and I'll end up winning the game. Oh wait, no, what am I saying? I have a Lysander, <laughs> I'm fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, at this point, I mean, I could go for the Choice Band or the Forest, but the smart play, 
the actual win that I have on board is by just Lysandering up the Shaman and knocking it out with Resolute Claw to take the game. So, uh, yeah, kudos on making the smart play to me. Uh, <laughs> Lord knows I don't always make it. But we are able to take out a... Uh, I'm assuming that's a, the pseudo archetype Quad Coco. I mean, that's a Tapu Coco deck. Very, very strong. A very good deck that's very fun to play. And Golisopod, just with the matchup that it has against EXs and GXs. We were able to win the game off of that. So, good job, Golisopod. You did good. Lorantis even came through clutch with the Flower Supply to set up the game. No matter what my opponent did that next turn. So... I hope you guys really enjoyed this deck. I encourage you to try it out for yourselves. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And this is Sticks signing out. Why not? See you guys.